So we're here after the UnGrip screening uh, hosted by the Zeitgeist Movement in Toronto. And we're here with Ben Stewart, who is a well-accomplished uh, filmmaker and a host of other things, musician, all sorts of creative awesome stuff. So I'm just going to do a little interview with him and ask him about some uh, personal inquiries that I have that hopefully you can shine a light on. And so, yeah, let's do it. So Ben, awesome to meet you. Awesome. Glad to be Thanks. here. Ahoy, everybody. So, um... I just wanted to ask you stuff on, like, you've uh, experienced many alternate states of consciousness through, like, uh, just open use of ayahuasca and stuff you said, and uh, just, I'm sure, like, you believe in extraterrestrials, all that sort of stuff. How does um, schizophrenia relate, or how does schizophrenia relate to all that sort of stuff for you? in terms of like how people grow up with natural hallucinations and all that sort of thing. Well, from, uh, from my limited research on schizophrenia, but through uh, having a good friend, seeing him before the you know the symptoms were to come out, yeah. and seeing the slow decline, or actually the rapid decline into uh, full blown what you would call uh, schizophrenia. Yeah. Um, there's there's two different aspects to it that I've seen. One. You can look at the, uh, the physical body and also the psyche as a light bulb. And <clears throat> too much light or too much energy being pushed through it can fragment it or fracture it and break it in a sense. So, um, in a sense, seeing or hearing different entities and uh, believing them to be there when nobody else can see them, there's several different ways that I've looked at it. One is the fact that we're always being spoken to within us, always, and we sometimes know how to break it down and sometimes we don't, we hear these voices in our head being the different aspects of our mind and if we don't recognize it as our mind we can project it into our perception of reality into another physical form or an entity that speaks to us that interacts with us and that's us interacting with our mind however this is also where i believe that possessors come in um, and possessors or uh, you know some are actually called astral larva so it doesn't even have to be uh, a human entity but um, different intelligences that actually inhabit us and go specifically to those who will take heed to an alternate uh, form of the mind. So a schizophrenic, somebody, would be an easy candidate for messages to be spoken to, in a sense. Um, now, there's not much intelligence of that in the sense of like communicating that to others because nobody really believes the schizophrenic, but that's not something that the intelligence of the Earth and like cosmic intelligence really pays much heed to. It pushes intelligence through the instruments that it knows how. So, um, so in these two different forms of schizophrenia, which you know I, you know, through my my meditation on schizophrenia, having having a friend that has gone through that, to try and understand what it is that he's been dealing with. Um, what I believe my friend is dealing with is a classic case of just the, the physical body, the astral body, the mental body not being able to take reality and fragmenting it in, in a certain way. And I do believe, though, that other intelligences, extraterrestrial, angelic, um, and even just indifferent, you know, demonic, uh, all different types of intelligences speak through what they can. Basically, they manifest, they take as a host what they can. So, again, a prime candidate is a schizophrenic. So, basically... Um, these intelligences, and you can even see certain people at certain times be and act completely different. And that's one, one definite thing of a schizophrenic is they're not always like uh, the way that you, you would typically see it in a movie. They're not always like that. So sometimes there are obsessors that really speak through the schizophrenics and speak to them. So that is an intelligence from outside the body. The 
the ultimate purpose of it, the, the best I could say is what an incubus and a succubus is, is us giving our energy and creating an entity of something that doesn't really exist. So the energy is there because we've given it form, such as you lust over a girl. And then you create a mental image in your mind of that girl that then becomes an energy source that is like a black hole. It just keeps wanting your energy. And that's why lust just grows and grows and grows like any ego would. And we give it form through our attention to it, our attention to the mind. And then that's the easiest way for another intelligence to inhabit something and get our conscious energy because that's all an obsessor or anything like that really does is they feed off our consciousness, our energy. So they will inhabit an uh, incubus or a succubus or something that is already getting our energy. They will inhabit that and that is what form we give it to. So a schizophrenic in a sense, in a way could be, you know, as I said, there's, there's many different explanations for a lot of very similar looking behavior. So what that could be is different intelligences actually speaking to the vessels to try and communicate a message through that schizophrenic yeah. or to just get energy from that schizophrenic. And that's that's a really rough literary way of being able to explain that. Uh, so like Terrence McKenna has a video on YouTube called Schizophrenic or Shamanic and he basically goes into stating that in earlier traditions or in earlier times when uh, people lived in tribe-like communities. Basically, a schizophrenic, if, if someone was shown signs to be schizophrenic, the, the people in that community would take them away and basically train them to be shamans because they said they basically could float in between spirit worlds and stuff like that. So, like, how, 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 have you heard anything personally on sort of, uh, I know you've been to a lot of indigenous communities and stuff, have you ever seen anything or heard anything of like how one gets brought into becoming a shaman or have you heard of schizophrenia and having any relationship to shamanism or anything like that? So, Typically, um, most shamanism, uh, from, you know, like I've, I've met several shamans that at the age of eight they became the shaman of their community. Yeah. Typically, most uh, things that I've at least read, now this is just the research I've done, I haven't experienced it personally, but um, trauma, uh, a heavy fever, like um, near-death experiences, uh, different types of illnesses, and also uh, psychotic breakdowns, schizophrenia, just uh, any number of things has been the, the catalyst for becoming a shaman in the past. And, uh, the fever is one of the, one of the best ones that I've heard because um, what that actually is, what, what is believed in shamanic cultures is the alchemical process. That fever is the alchemical process of the blood boiling between like the, uh, in, a, in a figurative sense, the tin and the copper becoming bronze in, in a sense, like creating something new by chemical reaction within the body and that's what the fever is a symbol of. So tribes would take, and you, you have to imagine, and you, you definitely have to understand that some tribes, uh, basically they just went on superstition. There's a lot of superstition that's wrapped up in it. So some, you know, a child uh, has a incredibly horrible fever, and the mind naturally wants to go, okay, this is the next shaman for our tribe. And then you have truly intuitive uh, individuals that will see that, okay, this isn't just a fever, this is something, there's a specific hint to it, there's a specific uh, signature or flavor to it. So where shamanism comes in with something like schizophrenia or any of those things to become a shaman, it, it really has to be discerned, it, it takes a great deal of discrimination to see, okay, this isn't just an event that could have happened to anybody, this has a specific flavor to it, in a sense, and that is what brings them to being a shaman. And typically, those are the ones that live into a ripe old age and actually they remain shaman because the, the tribe understands throughout 80 years or you know 60 remaining years of the person's life that all the messages that are brought come through an alternate, in a sense, purgatory state, you know, in between two worlds. They have 
one foot in the spiritual yeah. and one foot yeah. in the uh, physical. And you'll even see shamans most of the time in, in specific tribes, South Americans specifically, before going into any ceremony, they will actually begin shuddering and tremoring and, and, and like little like vocal tremors and everything like that. And they, they'll shake for a while, their eyes will roll in the back of their head, and they will come back with a different voice. And sci you know, scientifically shown that you know, like this is not the voice of the same, you know, that same person. So the voice will change, the complexion will change, the the mannerisms and everything will, will change of the shaman because, in a sense, they're an instrument, and that's what we all are. We're instruments channeling things at all times. There's no explanation for where art comes from, and that's what I believe shamanism to be is an expression of art. It's a communication of some music something and even Einstein and some of the greatest uh, scientific analytical thinkers in the world have said that their greatest breakthroughs have come from non-thinking yes, not for sure. not putting your mind or focusing into anything in an instant everything that needs to be known comes in an instant and the remaining years of writing that book or getting that workout is just decoding all of that seed of whatever was born in that yeah. person at that time. Interesting. Cool. Awesome. So I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that sort of specific topic because it's always one that has uh, interest in me. So uh, thanks for the interview and we'll hopefully see you soon. And Absolutely, awesome. my friend. Thanks, man. Thank you. Okay. Cheers.